Well, ladies and gentlemen, it appears that Kamala Harris could be moving to the right on the border issue. No, you're not hearing that incorrectly. It appears that there is now an ad uh, for the Kamala Harris campaign where she is claiming to basically crack down on the border. But I want to go back because I want to remind everyone just three years ago, the conversation that she had uh, with NBC News about the border. For those who may forget, Kamala Harris was assigned to the border. That was her specific task as vice president. So a lot of people have been complaining about the migrant situation. And by the way, it's not just conservatives that have been complaining about this. I've interviewed people on this show as well that have voted for Joe Biden uh, and, and, and Kamala Harris campaign in 2020 that have flipped their position on this issue because there have been migrants that have come into their cities and they're seeing that they're being offered certain benefits that are not offered to them. So we've spoken about this before on this channel. We're going to go back three years ago with this conversation that she had with Lester. And then we're going to fast forward to the rhetoric that is coming from Kamala Harris today. All together, we are going to piece together this, <laughs> these pieces, and we're going to get to the root cause of this as well, because people have to understand there is a reason why people are coming here, which Kamala Harris does not get into even during this discussion. Let's go back three years ago with Lester Holt. The message for would-be migrants, don't come. Do not come. Do not come. The notion that the border is closed. Why should they believe you when they when they know that people are getting in? Well, Lester, here's the thing. Uh, I've been working on this issue for a very long time, and the kind of violence and danger that is associated with that trek, especially when we're talking about from Guatemala through Mexico to the United States. It's extremely dangerous. And the reason that I am in Guatemala is to address the reasons people leave home, flee. Knowing that the people who are here for generations, or if we know the, the history of Guatemala for centuries, they want to stay. They don't want to leave. But they need opportunity. They need assistance. They need support. But Americans and, don't... And Let's pause here for a second. So she's not being 100% honest about this. And this is another example of Kamala Harris uh, choosing to flip flop on certain issues. When she was running for president in 2020, she said, we have to talk about the why. Why are they coming here? Are they looking for a better life? They need resources, et cetera. Uh, then during uh, this particular discussion, actually right before this meeting, she decided to make that speech where she told them, do not come, don't come here. Uh, but Migrants have continued to come into the country and people are been complaining uh, because there has been a surge at the border. And this is not just coming from conservatives. This is also coming from Democrats as well. I want to be very clear about that and continue to remind you that it was Kamala Harris's job to deal with the issue at the border. So now she is trying to say that you have to understand, again, going back to what she said in 2020, why they are coming here. But she's not being 100 percent honest about that either. The reason why a lot of them are coming here, if you look at the countries where they are coming from, is because of the foreign policy decisions that our government has made in those countries. If you're noticing that there are migrants that are coming from countries like Belarus, for example, don't forget we have the war with Russia and Ukraine. If you notice that there are migrants coming from Haiti, don't forget about U.S. policy in Haiti that has caused people to flee Haiti. This goes all the way back to Woodrow Wilson when he sent in the U.S. Marines to occupy Haiti, not only to occupy Haiti, but also to disrupt their businesses, including their banks. So this, when it comes to Haiti, that goes back long, 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 long time ago. But when you look at the countries, Venezuela right now, the U.S. government has just interfered in Venezuela's elections, right? Right? So there's unrest in Venezuela and there has been for quite some time. Even under the Trump administration, there was a coup in Venezuela. So if you wonder why they're coming here, you have to look at the unrest that is happening in those countries that oftentimes is caused by the U.S. government. You have the ability to give them that. Yeah, Americans don't see a lot of that on a daily basis. What they yeah. do see at their, at their own border, children being lowered over fences, yeah. children coming in with, you know, phone numbers stenciled on, on their hand. Yeah. And so the question has come up, and you heard it here, and, and you, you'll hear it again, I'm sure, is why not visit the border? Why not see what Americans are seeing in this crisis? Well, we are going to the border. We have to deal with what's happening at the border. There's no question about that. That's not a debatable point. But we have to understand that there's a reason people are arriving at our border. 
and ask what is that reason and then identify the problem so we can fix it. What do you this is politician talk. So again, she said we have to ask why they're coming here, but she doesn't tell you what I just told you, which is the reason why they are coming here. Again, due to US foreign policy in their country. We have to talk about sanctions, how sanctions have ruined a lot of these countries. Those sanctions come from the US government. We have to talk about coups that have been implemented in those countries by the US government. So when she tells you that we have to look at why that is, again, that is just politician speak. That's another stonewall tactic. She gives that same stonewall tactic about reparations. We need to look into that. We need to figure out why that is. I just told you the answer to this. I just told you why this is happening. If I can tell you why it's happening, Kamala Harris can also tell you why it's happening, but she's not going to do so because that would jeopardize her political career. That is the reality, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't want people to argue over the workers, right? And this is what is happening because over the, over the Biden Harris administration, what is happening is because there has been a surge at the border, migrants have come in. They have been sent to the sanctuary cities by governors and governor uh, Abbott in Texas and Ron DeSantis in Florida. And what has happened as someone who lives in a state, I live in Massachusetts that vowed to be one of these sanctuary states and Boston vowed to be sanctuary city. What has happened is that when those governors have sent the migrants here, it has gotten to the point now where there's no more space. So our governor made a statement, a speech about this a couple of months ago. I talked about it on the show. She said, we need help from the Biden Harris administration because we have no shelter for them. We have nowhere else to put them. And that's just reality folks. If you come here now, you will see they have given emergency shelters to migrants. They tried to house them at Martha's Vineyard, but the wealthy people at Martha's Vineyard said, no, they can't stay here, even though Martha's Vineyard is vacant most of the year. So there's that. So they moved them into black, lower income communities in the Boston area. And the black residents that have complained about this, they're not hurt, right? They have been pushed out of recreation centers and they put migrants into the recreation center to house them there in black communities. Now it has gotten to the point where there is just no more housing. There's no more space to put them. There have also been complaints about mayors choosing to give them, give them debit cards, giving them baby strollers, giving them food, things like that. And again, I'm not here to say don't help people. I do mutual aid. I'm all about helping people. But the problem that is obviously being voiced by residents in those neighborhoods, you were not willing to do that for us. You weren't willing to give us baby strollers. You weren't willing to give us uh, debit cards that had money on it, prepaid debit cards. You weren't willing to give us you know, food. We have to fight for those things. There was a report that came from New York City that said that now migrants in New York City are actually getting more money than New Yorkers that have SNAP benefits. So this is an issue and this brings about another Thing that I want to say that a lot of people don't want to discuss, but it's this. When we talk about labor and we talk about data, data shows that illegal immigration or migrant coming into black, lower income, black neighborhoods, the data has shown that it does not help the black community in the labor force. Because what is happening is that a lot of these CEOs that own these companies, they are willing to employ migrants because they can pay them less. And now what happens is now you have lower income black residents competing with migrants for jobs that lower income black residents used to be able to get easily because the CEOs, the corporate class wants cheap labor. This is a reality and people need to wake up to that again. This is not an anti-migrant speech, but I'm just telling you the realities of what's on the ground and I'm telling you the data. And the data shows that this does not help black communities, particularly low income black communities. So all of this has happened under the Biden-Harris administration. There were migrants coming across during the Trump administration too, but the numbers have increased. Now, this is not to say that the Biden administration, they have not had more deportations. Uh, the numbers show that Joe Biden himself deported more Haitians than Donald Trump did. But when you have more people coming across, even though you deported more people, the numbers don't add up. So you have to pay attention to that. Let's continue with this video.
What do you tell a, a Guatemalan family who heard you, you say, don't come, but you know, they're facing the end. There's poverty, there's disease, all these things happening at once. You tell them don't come? We don't want, I, listen, I don't think that Americans want people to be exposed to harm if they can avoid it. They're taking the trek from the place that they know that they want to stay. So I'm here in Guatemala to say, what can we do to support people and to give them a sense of hope that help is on the way? The administration. If we don't want people to be exposed to harm, why is our government supporting Israel and they're killing Palestinian people, killing those children, if we don't want them to be exposed to harm? Looking to inject billions of dollars in aid to this region to help reduce that migrant surge. In April, nearly 180,000 migrants were apprehended by U.S. Border Patrol, the highest number in 20 years. And more unaccompanied migrant children come from Guatemala than anywhere else. Over 16,000 unaccompanied children tonight in custody. What is your What's victory look like in this, or what does improvement look like? Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I would suggest to you that we have seen progress already. When we have 12 of the biggest corporations of America who have, I convene them in my office and they have agreed to, to help us work on this issue. Success so far is the bringing together of, of community-based organizations, not only in the United States, but here in Guatemala today. Yes, those corporations are helping with this issue by giving them jobs here as well. And Kamala Harris leaves this out. This is another big problem that we run into with capitalism, because the reality is if you have the opportunity, if you don't care about the people and you have the opportunity and you just care about your bottom line, you are going to take cheap labor. You're not necessarily going to take, especially if there's jobs that you can just be trained on the job and they just teach you the skill and you learn it very quickly. You're going to take the cheaper labor. You're not going to take the labor uh, that is asking for a, a raise, that's asking for health care benefits and all those other benefits that we should just have anyway in this country. That is what a lot of these CEOs are doing. That's one of the pitfalls, again, and one of the dangers of capitalism. So I, I think it's good to go back and look at this video from three years ago because the numbers increase after this interview. This interview didn't change anything. And if you notice now, Kamala Harris is not doing interviews, right? So there's a reason for that. That was one of my meetings with civil society leaders uh, to let them know we see them. And we understand their concerns about corruption. And we also understand their role of leadership to help us in terms of how we prioritize our work in this region. So how quickly does this change what we see at the border? I don't know that we're going to see it. Listen, I've been very clear from the beginning. There is, there's not going to be a quick fix. We've seen progress, uh, but the, the, the real work is going to take time to manifest itself. Will it be worth it? Yes. Will it take some time? Yes. There's one other topic I wanted to uh, talk to you about, but let me just quickly put a button. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, I'm here in Guatemala today. I, at some point, you know, I, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to. So notice that she keeps saying we we are going to the border. Then she said we've been to the border. This was not a we assignment. She was assigned to the border. That was the job that she was given, not her and Joe Biden. Specifically, that was Kamala Harris's job. So when she says we've been to the border, she's talking about Kamala, not Kamala Harris, excuse me. She's talking about Joe Biden. And you'll see that in this next statement when she tells you that she hasn't been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. I'm not discounting the importance of the border. Well, I, I mentioned I, it because even I, I know Republicans have certainly come at you on this, but Democratic Congressman Cuellar, as a border district, has said to the, you and the president, "Come, you need, I to, care you need to see about, this." Listen, I care about what's happening at the border. I'm in Guatemala because my focus is dealing with the root causes of migration. No, it was not. Because if her focus was dealing with the root, the root causes of migration, she would call out American foreign policy, which she is not doing. Don't forget, Kamala Harris takes over $5 million from APAC. Okay. So she's not really concerned about 
other causes. So this is important for people to really understand. I wanted to go back to this interview to show you that things did not improve at the border after this discussion with Lester Holt. In fact, the numbers increase and it was not just Guatemala at that time. They were talking about Guatemala, but it's happening from different countries as well. So as you can see there, Kamala Harris had no plan to deal with the border. And she was called out about that interview. And a number of people, a, num a number of liberal media pundits decided to jump in and defend her. And they said that, well, she's just being uh, ridiculed because she's a woman or because she's a black woman. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there are some people that are going to do that. They are going to treat you a certain way because of your race or because of your gender. But the reality is that was her assignment. And when you tell people in an interview that you have not been to the border and that was your assignment, you're telling people that you're not serious about getting the task done. You're not serious about fixing this. And none of this is going to be fixed unless you fix U.S. foreign policy. This is nothing. There is a war raging in the Middle East. This is nothing. More people are going to be di displaced. And I, I keep warning people about this. More people are going to be displaced. The U.S. government wants to ruin these countries. They want to sanction these countries. They want to steal their resources. And then they're upset when they arrive at the border. Where else are they supposed to go? So people have to think about that. Now Kamala Harris is changing course. Now she is running to the right when it comes to the border. And I wanna call it a couple of things. We're gonna see this ad, and I wanna to explain to you how this is BS. This is total propaganda. Let's get into it. Harris has spent decades fighting violence. Actually, let me turn it up a, a little bit more because the volume is kind of low on this. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting violent crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. Fixing the border is tough. So is Kamala Harris. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Let's go back through this and we're going to debunk some of these statements here. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting violent crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. So she was a border state prosecutor, which means she had experience handling the border which makes sense. That's why they assigned the border to her. Does everybody get this now? So if she had experience as a border state prosecutor, why didn't Kamala Harris do anything during her, during her vice presidency uh, term to fix this issue? This ad that is running around right now has a number of people screaming, whoa, she's running to the right on the border. What's going on? She sounds like Donald Trump. What's going on, right? So what is interesting, what a lot of people are not piecing together is that these are things that Kamala Harris can do right now. Right now, Kamala Harris can implement everything that she's talking about in this video right now because she was assigned to the border. You do not have to be the president of the United States to take on this task when it was your assignment. So this is another propaganda tool for presidential campaigns. It would be different if she was not a part of the current administration and she was not assigned to the border, but she is. So a lot of people are not taking a step back and looking at this for what it really is. Everything that Kamala Harris is claiming she is going to do in this ad as president, she can do right now because she is assigned to the border. Let's continue. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. She can do that right now. Does everybody see this? Fixing the border is tough. So is Kamala Harris. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Fixing the border is tough, so is Kamala Harris. So again, now you have Kamala Harris running to the right on the border issue. And some people are probably like, well, Sabby, what do you want her to do? Do you want her to fix it or not fix it? Yeah, it needs to be fixed. But like I said, at the end of the day, as long as the US government is continuing to steal resources from these countries, putting sanctions on these countries, starting coups in these countries, the migration is going to continue. That's what people have to understand. 
Now to add to that, it's just hilarious to me because Democrats are eating this up. Liberals are eating this up. But if this were an ad that Donald Trump had, they would be attacking this ad heavily and they would claim, oh God, the scary right wing propaganda. So does everybody see how the Democratic Party has moved further to the right, not to the left? For all the people that said we can push the Biden-Harris administration left, we can push them left. I told you before, they have moved further to the right. This is a perfect example right here with the border issue. So people, I, I just want people to wake up from the propaganda. I want people to realize what is right in front of them. I want people to realize that Kamala Harris is in a unique situation because she is a part of the current administration and she's running for president right now. So there are things that she can do now, especially when it was her assignment. That interview I showed you at the beginning of this segment was three years ago. The numbers increased since that segment which means that Kamala Harris was not doing her job. And this is the person that everyone thinks is going to be the savior. This is the person that everyone trusts to be president of the United States. What I think is happening is that Kamala Harris is trying to beat Trump at his own game. So one of the ways she can beat him at his own game when it comes to the border is by running to the right on the border. The sooner that people see that politics is a game, the sooner that people see that this two party system is a problem, the more people are going to wake up and walk away from the system as a whole. And what I would encourage everyone is to do, and this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm a registered independent. There are many of you out there that are like me. There are many of you that don't like either party. But I think what's been happening over the years is a lot of people that are registered independents, they've been choosing one party or the other. I think independents need to break away from the system altogether, break away from the duopoly. And I think they need to start supporting third party and independent candidates. You guys know where I stand on this issue. I will be supporting Jill Stein uh, come November. I will not be supporting the two party system. And I come from the Bernie Sanders movement. I still believe in those left policies. I still believe in Medicare for all. I still believe in you know free public universities. I still believe in those things. And having lived in a country that has had those things, I know if we were to decrease our defense budget, we could have those things here in the United States as well. But the problem is our politicians are bought and paid for. They are owned by Wall Street, they're owned by the military industrial complex, and that is why they don't work for their constituents. They work for those entities instead. And that's why we don't see improvements in this country. Kamala Harris running to the right on the border for something that she can go ahead and do right now.